Welcome to Heart of Poland, the impossible mission to discover the heart of Poland. And today's guest is going to be a very, very interesting one indeed. Bilgen Arambata has been a star on the Polish TV scene for many years. And here he is. Hey, what's up? Look at this beautiful lad. Uh, there's Patrick Ney and, uh, and me. I was wondering to begin it uh, with something different, like uh, chocolate, starfish, and a hot dog flavored Patrick with the song of a hot dog, all biscuits and stuff. But we didn't have actually rights to do it. And we're just going to talk you over. I Have a good you, night. I told you it was going to be an interesting episode. <laughs> Bilgen Arumbata, did I say that correctly? Yes, you did. Oh, um, okay. Arumbata in Bilgon, actually. Son of Arumbata. Son of... Uh... <laughs> son of Poland, actually, in a way. Oh, son of Poland, exactly. So, um, and Mongolia, I think so. You came when you were 10 years old. 11, to be exact. It, it must have been pretty intimidating. It was, it was, you know, in the beginning, it wasn't actually very, very smoothly going um, live because there was only me and my mother and my mother, you know, came here for exchange, doctors exchange and stuff. And she was working all day long and I was uh, going to school. They sent you to a Polish school not knowing a word of Polish. I had to, because who would take care of me? I was a little kid, so my mother was working, so she just, you know, she, she sent me to school. Man, that must have been so hard. I, mean, um, I had a month of preparing because I was, you know, uh, writing these elementary stuff, trying to learn these words and, and di digits, actually, I knew. I actually knew the, um, how do you call the table? Tabliczka mnożenia, which is a... Times table. Times table, yeah. exactly. Yes. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Thank you, God, that I remembered that. Uh, I was that, you know, I was trying to, to, to scream I mean, like, but, uh, Eureka, they don't have times table over there. Polish numbers are also ridiculously hard to learn, so even if you have this uh, tablica, uh Yeah, you still speaking gotta... it, I mean, vocabulary, that's, that's the... High, high, high hills, high heels, yeah, no, high, high, high heels. heels, high heels, high heels, whatever same, you want it to be. <laughs> same difficulty, I think. So, I mean, let's go back then to that time. You're at 11, it's your first day at school. You know, you're from Mongolia. It must, must have been pretty difficult. It was difficult, but it was not so difficult <laughs> thanks to people I've met. Because uh, in, in school, uh, when I meet people, they, they were actually nice. They, they were, you know, shaking hands. Tesh, they were saying, I, I didn't know what that means, actually, he said Tesh, and I was looking at my mother, what he's doing, is he threatening me or what? But he was actually, you know, uh, trying to greet, and, and that was my first word I, I've learned, actually, Tesh, because good word. mother was saying Jindobri is the word to, to say hi. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you say Jindobri to your school. Yeah, and, I, and right. I've actually uh, spent a lot of time in Świetlica, it's at uh, something like a play, playing room. Yeah. Playroom, yes. Yeah. Would you wait for another sessions or something? Yeah. And and I was staying there and watching Cartoon Network, which is where you learned this fantastic English that you have. Yes, I I, I mean I learned elementary stuff, you know, the, the beginning, and then thanks to that, when I came to Cambridge School of English afterwards, I didn't start from the bottom. Yeah. Now, when I first came to Poland, uh, which is in 2010, to live. You, you're big, you're basically everywhere on television. And you had like a, a, a spectacular, basically, TV crew. It started with the Shimon Majewski oh, yeah. show. Now, in the, I have to do this for research purposes. I have to go back to the old uh, material of each of my guests and look back at it. I was laughing my head off, because <laughs> now I speak Polish enough, I can actually understand what's going on. You look like you were having the time of your life. Literally, like, it's so much fun on set. Really? I was, I was actually there playing a bit... Um, um... A clumsy guy. Yeah, but you've really, yes, like, but, but you it was fun or, or a lot. Yes, because the thing is that uh, after I mean, in the middle of these sessions, I was like more excited. At first, I didn't know who is who. Actually, the, the celebrities they didn't. I didn't care about them. I was uh, actually studying um, medicine in Warsaw, so I, I didn't watch TV. But then. Um, you know, at the second, third, fifth time, I knew who is who, and uh, I had a big fun. You were, you were playing this slightly, um, 
don't want to say like playing the fool is the expression in English, not yeah. quite that. Act the fool. Act the fool. It's like the rapper thing. <laughs> you were, fool. <laughs> but it's a personality, wasn't it? Because that's not obviously who you are. Why were you playing that, that slightly dippy character we'd say in English? Well, um, I was playing, but I was also getting an inspiration from the Cartoon Network, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> because, the, you know, goofiness is something... Um, the the element of mine also. I am I'm also goofy in my life uh, sometimes, and and uh, oh, I say even more than I wish. Uh, <laughs> but uh, there are some um, things that I just took with me, and, and uh, goofiness was uh, actually abbreviating to to be more also uh, to to take more empathy from people, maybe something like that. And people like oh, when 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 they watch TV and see more stupid or clumsy or, or goofy people than they are. Yes, well, uh, that's, the, the, that's the kind of entertainment, to right? Really, to be honest. <laughs> yes. Did you get kind of tired of that characterization, that, that particular character? Actually, the main theme was uh, they were searching for a journal, I mean, Shimon Maevsky and the, the whole crew, they were searching for a um, journalist who will be, um, you know, who will be a little bit clumsy, but uh, clumsiness wasn't the thing. The thing was the main thing was uh, to to be um, how do you call it new in the environment. Yes, he wouldn't like Peter Sellers. Yeah. Uh, in a, in, a, in a party, he was like that. I haven't seen the uh, particular film, but I, I just want to ask you: Is it true you got that role by doing something with snow? I was a student that, uh, you know, when something comes in, like some income, I would be fine with it. And um, very rarely, but I did some commercial stuff when they needed some um, Asian guy. So I was the Asian guy and, and it occurred that uh, we were in the studio where it was Shimon Maevsky's promo actually uh, being recorded. And I had to... You took a leak in the snow. Uh, yes, and I wrote SMS, which is like Shimon Maisky, and then Shimon Maisky comes in and he said, "Hey, hey, hey! Listen, listen up, listen up! Hey, hey, hey listen up! Uh, um, when you when you were in, in in your holidays and you see someone special, someone funny, make them say Shimon Maisky show, and you will be invited to our show, and uh, there will be some fun." <laughs> and 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 afterwards, director came to me and he said. Uh, we're looking someone uh, for someone like you. Maybe you would like to do some playing stuff. I mean, fun stuff. And I said, okay. What happened afterwards? Because you basically would have... Afterwards, yeah. I went to school. I was, I was <laughs> learning. I was doing some of my, old, Which my you own gave up thing. After two years? Um, no, it's actually, like... I just came home. And, and two months later, they called me to have an um, interview, something like that. So I came and we spoke. Um, we made a trial, yeah, and, and, and that's yeah. it. But then, obviously, this, you, you became very well known, and uh, oh yeah, it just famous? blown away. It just blown. I what, didn't know. Like? I was thinking like it's just an adventure. What the hell do you want? And and suddenly, people on the streets were like um, looking at me weirdly. Then they were smiling, so I was like smiling <laughs> next to them. I mean, I really like the the um, idea of that when you smile. I mean, someone smiles, you smile back, and and. Karma stuff. Yeah. Was there some negative sides of that? Because all of a sudden you feel like you can't walk I didn't, the streets. I didn't, I didn't feel anything negative, maybe once, but it was lately, so no. whatever. Now, um, you then go on and do like an enormous amount of work. So when I look at your Wikipedia, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on there. I saw a particular scene with you on uh, Foyer de Fage, uh, Mise en Elmo, where you're dressed in... Uh, drag as I think a Dorotarin, if I remember correctly. Uh, Danutarin, so, yes. Uh, Danutarin, sorry. Uh, <laughs> which is really quite a spectacular performance. You make a fantastic singer, as well as a woman, or woman singer. I don't know which one was more convincing, to be honest. I think that it was a good combo. <laughs> <laughs> it was like Contra, you know, when you play Contra, the, the, the guys. The, I do not. The makeup was, was impressive, to be honest. Yes, the, uh, the makeup was actually from Shimon Maisky show. Ah. Agnieszka. She's very, very good uh, uh, FX, you know, special effects, uh, makeup artist, and, and she does enormous uh, things from nothing, actually. She's, she's just MacGyver, I would say. <laughs> we, we, what was your kind of t target with your media career? Did it just kind of happen naturally that you went from one thing to another? How, how does it work? Do you have some amazing agent that got you into all of these places, or people were calling you? 
there was a big leap actually because um, after um, Shimon Ray's show, I went to Dancing with the Stars, and that was actually a big, uh, big trampoline, a yeah. big jump to, to 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 you know to to the skies. I guess I don't know. I'm so <laughs> <laughs> I'm so embarrassed saying these because I don't know. I think I have a little ego. A little in a good way or a little in a. Uh, I'm humble. Humble. Yeah. Yeah. A kind of person because you can easily lose yourself in this world of showbiz and party yes you can did you ever feel like you maybe had uh, you know, that I've lost stopped myself be, stopped being yourself in all of this through I the think, adulation through I the... think there was a time I could do that but uh, always my grandmother called me and she said you know kid what the hell are you doing <laughs> get out of there so your family is seeing you back home in Mongolia, your family, your wider family is seeing you become this My grandma's like... here in Poland. Oh, she's here? Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. She's here, she lives uh, with my parents actually in, uh, in the suburbs. So she calls me every day. I, I wouldn't be, she might, she might be calling right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she calls like, hey, what's up? How are you doing? Fine? Okay. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> she's just checking, you know. But I mean, uh, you've been at this stage now, you've done really quite a lot of stuff as well. What would, for example, your advice be to any foreign person trying to make a career out of, um, I say foreign obviously because you've been here for a very long time, but uh, you know, Polish TV is a pretty hard industry, isn't it? Um, yes, it's, it's, I think that Poland is very conservative in a, in a, uh, in a massive way. I mean, the, the masses are conservative, as you know <laughs> from the votes. And, um, uh, thing is that uh, stereotypes are, are the big influence. So you can play with the stereotypes. I think the stereotypes are the... the I mean, every, every comedian knows that that's the uh, biggest uh, topic to, to aggravate and, and play with it. So I just tried to do it. Yeah. Uh, uh, but did you ever feel like there was a, an artistic side that you wanted to express that wasn't coming out through the TV work you were Yes, doing? because um, the thing is, at the beginning, I was really more into music person. I really wanted to be an actor, but my parents persuaded me to become a doctor. So I, uh, I, I went there and then, then suddenly I just escaped from, from medicine, med school. I started to be, you know, like um, going hard on the ground, um, but then when you realize that it's not really yourself, you, you want to push, pursue, pursue your uh, road. And, and I was doing that. Um, and suddenly uh, the, the road that's called Comedian kept, kept, you know, I mean, came, came along and I was doing that. But it was, I think, too long. Because I, once I felt like I'm in a river and I'm just floating with it things got out of control and, and sometimes you just don't want to be the comedian always to be funny because because people have expectations of you you know when somebody meets you say hey say tell, tell us something funny say us something funny man and, and and you disappoint them yeah and to think of yourself it's the ego egoistic stuff when you say it's 5 30 <laughs> and then and then you can say uh, something you know something uh, out of your um, palette of, of jokes and, and she, she just goes away I but it's the, it's it every time is. you do that you just you're losing a bit of yourself I just always struck sometimes by it kind of it's exciting and, and then when you feel like actually I can put that behind me now because I'm going on something that's bigger and now more exciting for me because I'm a creative person. I get the sense that you are a very creative person. You know, yes, I, I really like to create. Uh, musician, comedian, presenter, you know, these, these things are hyper creative elements. You're, you're part of a band now and you're, yes. this, you're kind of like right out on the front of the stage as the vocalist going kind of like drawing all of this energy yes well. and i have the same thing same issue because uh we are a band which is nothing actually funny like a satire stuff and um people just needs it i mean when i come into and you know we are playing some some serious stuff you know i'm just crying over there and uh, singing about the the broken relationships and the girls and stuff and they'll, they'll be like, tell us a joke. <laughs> <laughs> what else do you do to keep your days busy now? Um, I'm actually acting also in Ochtheat. 
and uh, I don't want to take uh, take a business. I mean, I don't want to be busy that much as before because I have a daughter now, so I think it's it's the more priority stuff. Yeah. What could you, if you could change something about that kind of crazy ten-year period that you've had? What I would change? Yeah. I think I would change. Um, I would listen to my parents more. I think that's the thing. Really? Yes, because you know I've been raised in a Mongolian way, which is um, which is very different. I mean, is uh, some people say that we parents in Mongolia, we gave you life, we can take it from you. I mean, actually, it's not, it's not actually true. But uh, um, when you can say that, it means that there is something, you know, that expectation also and. Uh, mm, some maternity stuff you need to respect. What about Poland then? Um, you're not a Polish citizen, but you could be, but you can't because you don't want to give up your uh, Mongolian citizenship. That's right. Yes. Um, so you're, you're a resident now? Or? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a resident. So actually I have all the possibilities except of, for voting, which is not a hasty thing for me, I think. Uh, but. Uh, I could get Polish citizenship, but I didn't because um, Mongolia forbids having double citizenships or triple. But, but, but more your daughter, one. for example, is a Polish. How does that work? Is she. Oh yeah, she's she's a Polish. I wonder from you're kind of like therefore both an outsider and an insider because when you come at ten, you're kind of young enough. You speak perfect Polish from my point of view at least. Uh, and you know, you've lived here for the vast majority of your life. So um, do you f still feel an outsider in some way? Um, yes, of course, in some way. Oh uh, yeah, my, my parents, doctors, they, they, all, they also have uh, um, friends, colleagues from Mongolia too that they came here. Um, they are a big mafia here. <laughs> I mean, they're just, uh, an entourage, you know, and they have kids at the similar uh, age of every uh, siblings. And uh, when I'm with them, most of the time I feel like Polish, but sometimes, you know, I, I, I have a yearning to, to go to Mongolia and, you know, see my other and, um, family. When you're with your wider family, do they say like, oh, you've changed or you're the, the, the Polish, there's a Polishness in you? Actually, I speak better Polish than Mongolian, so they, they know. <laughs> yeah, once I, I tried to flirt with a lady and I was like, going in, okay, no, I need one shot more. <laughs> and I went in and I was saying, like, where's the toilet? <laughs> and we didn't end up well. <laughs> but either way, so it was, you know, I have some blockade. I think I have more blockade in Mongolia than in Poland. Well, it kind of makes sense, I guess, because you're... Mm -hmm. How often do you go back, or once every one, three uh, years? Or I've been there lately, uh, this summer, but uh, uh, before, I was eight years ago, so ah, it was a pretty long time. Quite a long time. Mm -hmm. So, if you had to explain Poland to somebody who's never come to the country before, uh, in a short way, and I know this is a big ask, so forgive In a short me. way? Yeah, you know, like, what is Poland? What does Poland mean to you? The program is, after all, Heart of Poland. Of Poland? Poland is uh, actually. Oh, I need to say, <laughs> I need to say to you that uh, I was making also a program which was Puk Puk Tome, where I was going uh, through Poland, all over the place, and yes. I was checking the hospitality of Polish people, and that was quite of a good time because uh, really I must say that Polish people are very hospitable. Yes. yes. Where is the heart of Poland? Heart of Poland. It's over here. Can you see it? It's, no, actually, it's, it's just my heart, which is uh, one of the hearts of Poland. Well, heart of Poland is in in in, in people, I think, because um, you know nowadays people uh, say that that there is a big big problem with uh, the the political stuff, and but taking that away, actually, people are very very nice and they're very open-minded. I mean, okay, not open-minded, but opened to other people. Um, the basic instinct is very, very um, towards, I think. Do you think, uh, how do you think Poland's changed? I remember when uh, people didn't have cell phones. <laughs>
Times were different then, weren't they? Oh uh, yeah. Um, you used to have like these cards, go to booths and then call that's old with school. them. The yeah. Young people watching this program will not know. What oh really? Even talking about yeah. It was the, why would you even know what they were? The little. So we should talk about it. We should do. Let them know their history. Yes. <laughs> what, what's in 1996? 96. That sounds like quite recently, but okay. Uh, tell me, what are you what are you working on right now? You've got the acting uh, and the band. That's like quite busy. Have you got any plans coming up? Anything exciting? Um, yes, we are actually uh, trying to release our single, but we need to make a video. Your band is called Lavina. Oh, yes, it's, we want to change the name because Lavina sounds uh, cheesy, I think. I want to let you know that I have an ex-girlfriend called Lavina and... Oh, I is she um, from Indonesia? No, but uh, is that where this name comes from? Who, I think it, so. Is it yours? I've, I've checked it. Y yeah? Yes, I've it's checked. It's a very nice name. Um, and they have also Lavina band in Indonesia. Ah. There is a little girl that's uh, frontman. <laughs> Are they higher in Google than you guys? I think we're going to double them. <laughs> double them, you know. <laughs> Okay, so um, what else, uh, you, got, you know, because I mean, you've got quite a, li a long life ahead of you now. There must be something that you've got something your eye on, for example, on your TV program. I, I was thinking about TV. TV is, a, um, TV is actually a great when you start, you know, uh, when you do, um, you become a character that is recognized in TV. There are lots of ideas and you can do them all, but these ideas won't be yours, I think. Um, or I just didn't have a big influence on it. <laughs> Anyways, um, the producers are the big, the big idea guys. You know, they, they really want to make you. And that, that was a problem with me, I think. In the sense of? In the sense of making me. Uh, they had an image of me and they want to change me yeah. but I want to straight stay true uh, and stuff uh, would you recommend to anyone else to work in te television TV sure why not if they if, if they want to you know nowadays people uh, have Instagram they become stars just uh, posting naked photos over there so um, such people you've been following my secret account <laughs> Oops. Damn it, Bill. I didn't realize you were going to do your research. The, it's actually Patrick Hay. <laughs> 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 it's, uh, it's very hidden. It's, co it's coded site. I don't know how you got in there. You, you, you have, have one friend over there. Oh, what? Yeah, this is yeah. the middle eye. I'm, I'm a follower. I'm the fan. <laughs> <laughs> it must be the secret vision stuff that you've got going on. Bill, I'd love to chat to you more, but we have literally oh, really? run out of I, time. I didn't what did we not say anything, about? actually. What, what did we not talk about that you'd like to talk about? Well, um, um, I'm the kind of person that needs to be like a little bit dragged, you know. Uh, maybe that's why I was um, side, getting sidetracked. Sidetracked. Yeah. Yes, that's that's my um, big big problem. I get sidetracked. What irritates you about Poland? Oh, that's a hard question. Irritates. There is there is actually um, uh, not so much, you know. Oh come on. Uh, po Polish people like to uh, nag. That's the thing, they, they really want to say, um, uh, they say words they don't need to say actually because, and, and they forget very, very quickly, I think. About complaining, nagging? Yes, because nagging is all the time over, all over around, so it's like um, evergreen that's coming by <laughs> and goes. It's, uh, now you sound like you're talking about someone I know who lives with me on a daily basis. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like a fog in, in Britain. <laughs> Oh, stop oh. Those <laughs> I thought you just came down with an umbrella. <laughs> it was a charming walk through an interesting life in Poland, and that is what this program is about. So I'll see you again for the next episode of Heart of Poland.